I'm here alone again, this time to review the new The Little Mermaid. Disney is releasing it on May 26th, 2023. It's directed by Rob Marshall. I believe his best known film is Chicago. Uh, the original cartoon came out in 1998 and I know I watched it at least once when it came out on VHS. So I'm assuming that was 1991. Uh, I don't remember anything about it. So I couldn't say what's different from the cartoon versus this new version, but the story. Ariel, the youngest daughter of the Kingdom Atlantica's ruler, King Triton, is fascinated with the human world, but mermaids are forbidden to explore it. After saving Prince Eric from a shipwreck and falling in love with him, she becomes determined to be with him in the world above water. These actions lead to a confrontation with her father and an encounter with the conniving sea witch Ursula, making a deal with her to trade her beautiful voice for human legs so she can discover the world above water and impress Eric. However, this ultimately places her life and her father's crown in jeopardy. Uh, that's basically it. <laughs> For people who don't know, Ursula the Sea Witch is the sister of King Triton. And King Triton banished her from the kingdom because she's evil. So for the past 15 years, she's been trying to come up with a way to take control of the kingdom. And she's going to do so by taking advantage of the fact that her niece, Ariel, is in love with a human. So she tells Ariel she can make her a human for three days so she can go above water, make the prince fall in love with her. But in exchange, she wants Ariel's voice. And I'm so stupid. I didn't remember that Ariel would be mute once she be went above water. I thought it just meant that she wouldn't be able to sing. But anyway, Ariel trades her voice in for three days as a human. And if she can get the prince to fall in love with her, and she would show that by having him kiss her, then she can stay a human. But if she's not successful, she has to return to being a mermaid. And now Ursula owns her. And then Ursula would use her to convince King Triton to give her his power so that Ursula can now be the ruler. So Ariel fails. She's sent back to be a mermaid. King Triton tries to stop Ursula, but in the process is killed. Ursula turns into this big creature, but then Ariel is able to kill Ursula by having like a ship like spear her. So now she has King Triton's whatever that thing is called, looks like a big golden fork. And she uses that, Ariel uses that to bring her father back to life. And then her father grants her her wish of being a human. So now Ariel and Prince Eric can live happily ever after as humans. But another plot line is that humans, specifically King Eric's kingdom and his mother, the queen, they believe that there are like underwater or an under like underwater gods who are against them so the final scene is that king triton has his kingdom come up above water to sort of stand side by side with the humans showing that there is peace the end uh what did i think of this movie okay so i liked it better than the reimagined versions uh or the live action version versions of the lion king beauty and the beast and aladdin which is not saying a lot because I didn't care for those movies at all. To be fair, this is not the type of film I would choose to watch. Uh, I do think it's worth watching because Halle Bailey is perfect as Ariel. She is so fun to watch. Her singing, specifically her version of Part of Your World, is sublime. And she, for me, was the best part of the film. Um, I also thought... I mean, the character of Ursula is fun. I don't know that I loved Melissa McCarthy in it, but we can get to that. So I was reading some of the controversies surrounding the film. The first one I was aware of is that people, there was a lot of backlash when it was announced that a black woman was going to play Ariel, which I just think is so crazy because Ariel is not a human being. So to be bothered by the color of this character's skin feels really racist to me. I hope that when people see the movie, they'll see that she is perfectly capable uh, as this character. But a couple of other things I didn't know is that people had issue with the supporting characters like Sebastian and Flounder, a fish and a crab, looking too realistic. That also seems silly to me. I don't know, like, did they want them to look like cartoons 
within this live action film. I think they work just fine. And then people felt a way about Ursula being played by Melissa McCarthy because they felt that it should have been a drag queen playing that character because the cartoon was inspired by the drag queen Divine. I could see people feeling that way. I I didn't know that was a criticism prior to watching the film. I think as I was watching it, I wasn't as impressed by Melissa McCarthy because my memory of the cartoon is that Ursula seems just like bigger and meaner and nastier. So I expected an actor who maybe was older and larger in size playing Ursula. When we see Melissa McCarthy as Ursula, she looks like a regular lady with eight tentacles <laughs> and horrible makeup, which I guess I can talk about now because uh, I see all the memes about it. I don't know what the decision was behind that, but or the, or the reasoning behind having her have, I mean, it looks so uneven and simple. It's just basically like big blocks of eyeshadow and like wonky eyebrows on this white skin. It did not work for me. But the bigger topic that I feel like I have to talk about is Ariel's hair. I am sure that there were many, many, many conversations about what Ariel's hair should be like, considering a black woman is playing the role. And I'm sure they went through many renders of how it looks digitally. Ultimately, I found it very distracting. When we first meet Ariel underwater, it appears as though maybe 70% of her hair is straight, like, like just straight hair. That's the texture with like braids in it. And in some scenes, it looked like she had like box braids. And then in other scenes underwater, they look like, it looks like her hair is locked, but not all of her hair. When she gets out of water, sometimes it looks like maybe 50% of her hair is locked. When she becomes a human, and her hair is completely dry. There are times when it looks like 100% of her hair is locked. I found it extremely distracting. Um, and that's all I have to say about it. I, again, I think Halle ba Bailey as this character is perfect, but I did find her hair distracting, which gets me to how the film looks. I, so I think the CG, well, as I was watching it, I was thinking of Avatar 2 and all of the time we spend underwater and how amazing that looks. This film does not compare to Avatar 2 with the underwater scenes. And then I was reading a review from Variety where they said, ultra stylized widescreen vistas digitally rendered to within an inch of their life such that we're practically drowning in detail. I kind of felt the opposite. This movie felt very contained I had the same critique of The Lion King in that I didn't get a sense of how big the kingdom was in The Lion King. I feel the same way in this movie. Like, King Triton's kingdom looks very small. It looks like an old regular fish tank that has like two rocks where the fish swim through and some like fake plastic plants. I, I didn't get a sense of how large this area was. And even when we get to Prince Eric's kingdom with his mother, the queen, and the castle, we do get a few shots of like the peninsula the castle is on that didn't seem that grand or broad and once we're in the castle i didn't get a sense of how grand it was i also think the cgi again is not up to avatar 2 levels but i think the visuals so like when we meet ariel's sisters king triton's daughters when we come upon them they're all sitting like in a semicircle they fully look like like video game characters. And then when we get closer to them, they look more real, but then I think the effect of them being underwater is diminished. I found that particularly true with Javier Bardem as King Triton. Sometimes it just looked like, I, I don't even know how to describe it. Like maybe there's like a, it's almost like a Snapchat filter of someone being underwater where you see kind of like little bubbles kind of hair moving but then King Triton has a big beard and that didn't really move but then his hair did yeah it it felt a little inconsistent to me but moving on to some of my notes so I don't know about the cartoon but in this film 
all of Ariel's sisters are of different ethnicities, which of course made me think, like, does King Triton have like seven different baby mamas or... Because I understood that Ariel's mom is dead, but I... So does that mean like all of these daughters have the same mom? Which I know is borderlining on not wanting Ariel to be black, that all the characters don't, can be anything, but it... It, it definitely was a little distracting just in that my immediate thought was, do they have the same mom? <laughs> so a really good scene in the beginning is Ariel has been told by her father, stay in the kingdom. Don't go to certain areas. Definitely don't go above water. Humans are vile. And she does not listen. Ariel's nothing but trouble. That character. Someone needed to whoop her ass because she does not listen. She collects stuff from like that falls to the bottom of the ocean from humans. And she goes to this area she's not supposed to go to a lot because we see that she has a collection of tchotchkes and it's pretty immense. So that means that she is always doing what she's not supposed to be doing, which also makes me think, who's watching her? Like, <laughs> I don't think King Tri uh, Titan's uh, parenting is very good. It's Triton, not Titan. But... When we first see her leave her kingdom, she there's a scene with a shark that is attacking her and her little friend Flounder. I thought that was very well done. Um, so the scene where Prince Eric's ship uh, wrecks and Ariel saves him, I was a little confused because there were a lot of people on that ship and then we only see a handful of people on the lifeboat and Ariel only saves Prince Eric. So did a bunch of people on that boat perish in the shipwreck? That seems kind of dark. Um, the, okay, so another supporting character is Aquafina voicing Scuttle, a bird. And the bird is supposed to be kind of an idiot. I thought that was fun. Although, I, I believe there's new music because Aqua, sp specifically Aquafina and the crab, Sebastian, have like a rap song. In the audience, people seem to really enjoy it. It was not for me. Because even the style of how they're rapping feels like contemporary. Um, so I, I didn't care for that choice. So the way the... Ursula can see what Ariel's doing above water and she sees that the prince is falling for her. So now Ursula is afraid that Ariel will actually make him fall in love with her. So Ursula's plan is to go above water and seduce Prince Eric because ever since Prince Eric has was rescued by Ariel, he's been looking for her because as soon as Ariel rescues Prince Eric, takes him to land, and as soon as he wakes up, he just sees her face and hears her voice, and she runs away. So that entire time, he's been searching for her. So once Ursula realizes that Ariel's successful, or will be successful, she comes back using Ariel's voice, which she keeps trapped in a necklace, and then she, ca she like puts a spell on Prince Eric to make him love her, I think. So they're about to get married, like lickety-split. And at the engagement party, Ariel shows up and destroys the necklace around Ursula's neck and then everyone can see that, you know, that these are mermaids and witches and everyone goes into a panic. Ursula takes Ariel back underwater. Uh, so what did I think of Prince Eric? Uh, he was okay. I don't think he's not as Halle Bailey's the star of the show. I feel like he's just supporting that character is not... I didn't care for his voice. I don't think the actor brought anything extra to it. So after Ursula is destroyed by the ship piercing her, then we see that Ariel, you know, goes back with her father after he's been reanimated. And then we see the next morning, Prince Eric, like, swims back to shore. I was very confused by that. Like, how long was this man out in the middle of the ocean that he... Like, was he out there all night long? <laughs> Getting back to how the film looks, I thought we do, at, at the end, King Triton comes back to, 
wish farewell to Prince Eric and his daughter Ariel because they're about to go on their honeymoon. And I thought Javier Bardem as King Triton out of the water looked so creepy. <laughs> Lastly, I think the story of the Little Mermaid to me fell kind of flat once Ariel becomes a human, partially because I didn't realize she was mute. I think Halle Bailey does a fantastic job of acting without having a voice, but we do rely a lot on Prince Eric's character, who I didn't find as captivating. But overall, based on the reaction in the theater, I think for people who were fans of the cartoon, I think they'll enjoy this one. I think for the little brown girls to see Halle Bailey play this character means a lot, and she does such a fantastic job. Uh, that being said, I thought this movie was okay. I would give it two and a half out of five. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye. Oh, <laughs>